Uh, hi guys. Uh, yeah, so there are uh, there are ten types of people in this world. Uh, those who understand binary numbers and those who don't. And uh, <laughs> when spoken, this joke uh, uh, makes no uh, sense. So, uh, ten. Uh, oh, uh, there's 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 only there's there's one zero types of people in this world. Those who understand binary numbers and those who don't. This has been the fate of mathematical humour throughout history. Ah, uh, it's it's a. Uh, um, does anyone have a chalk for? I could, I could just totally. Can I just show my working out on this one? The first maths joke was written in LLXIV BC, but for obvious reasons, it took a long time to write down. It wasn't until Arabic numerals came to Europe in the 10th century that the maths joke really took off among mathematicians. But even then, it remained underground. After all, normal people tell jokes; they don't write them down. But in the modern world. The internet has brought the maths joke to a worldwide audience. Most of these jokes are, of course, not pure comedy mathematics, but mock maths, formulae which form vulgar phrases when read aloud, or which capitalise on the lack of mathematical knowledge held by the general public. Take that old misogynist chestnut. Girls are the product of time and money. Time is money, therefore girls equal money squared. Money is the root of all evil, therefore girls are the root of all evil squared. Or evil, or more accurately, plus or minus evil, which is nonsense. Girls, like boys, are the product of sex. As you can see, written down, maths jokes are hilarious. But what's the decimal point of all this? Will the internet-fueled rise of maths jokes cause long division in the wider comedy community? Well, of course not. These are just stupid puns that have nothing to do with real, pure. Comedy mathematics, but puns do have their place in the world of mathematical comedy. <coughs> okay, what's sour, yellow, and equivalent to the axiom of choice? Zorn's lemon. Yeah, nice crap. Now, it's not just the numbers and the mathematics that can make us laugh. We can also derive humour from the stereotype of mathematicians themselves. You might think this stereotype doesn't deviate much from the stereotype of your common or garden scientist. You know that they're so intelligent that they're locked away from normal society that they're incapable of interacting with the world in a normal, everyday fashion. Super eight, six, carry the three, nine point seven nine one. Now, of course, this stereotype couldn't be further from the truth. But the stereotype for mathematicians goes even further. They're supposedly so obsessed by numbers, so locked up in the abstract, that they frequently bring mathematical principles into the real world, where they just don't belong. Hi there. I'm here about the job. All oh, right. You worked in a bar before. Uh, no, I'm a mathematician, so I'm sure I could figure it out. Okay. Why don't you come around here and show me what you can do? Right now, customer comes in. I want a Collingwood spritzer. There's your glass. Mate, you want? Lovely. All right. Now, let's say they want it with a slice of lemon. I'm reducing it to a problem I've already solved. Wah, 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 wah. But in the end, as with any kind of comedy, if you want to reach the lowest common denominator, you need to get a little dirty. Uh, the, uh, what what happened with the constipated mathematician? He, he worked it out with a pencil. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, what, what do you call a one-sided nudie bar? Maybe a strip club! That's Paulie Shaw's joke. <laughs> <laughs> Just... Get off. Mathematics. You are. Funnier than you think.